is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. Awesome. Thank you all so much for your time. We're going to hand it over to Case Western. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Chohan. I'm a BGY4. I'm the recruitment chief. Uh, let me take a moment to share my PowerPoint. Let's see if this is. Hi, everyone. I'm Normal Maxwell. I'm one of the other chiefs as well at Metro Health. One second. I am trying to get it to work. Okay. I think I should have everything set up now. Okay. So I'm here with my co-chief, Normal Maxwell. He's the administrative chief, and I'm the recruitment chief for this academic year. We're here to talk about uh, Metro Health, uh, which is associated with Case Western Reserve, and we're located in Cleveland, Ohio. We'll try to move through our information quickly because I know most people have probably had a long day uh, and we can backtrack and elaborate if you have questions for us at the end. Okay, so our program, we are six residents per year. All PGY1 spots are categorical and is an IM based prelim year that includes one month of stroke rehab. It's one of the oldest PMNR residencies in the country and it was ACGME accredited in 1958. Um, it has a mix of uh, inpatient and outpatient rotations at Metro Health Cleveland Clinic and the VA, as well as elective opportunities at multiple other sites. All right, so our program leadership. Our PD is Dr. Zakel. Our department chair is Dr. Wilson. And then we have actually two program coordinators, Randa and Melanie. And then we have three APDs, Dr. Gabbett, Dr. Leb, and Dr. Hillary. All right, so Normal, we'll talk a little bit about our categorical PGY-1 year. Yeah, so just like Michelle was mentioning, um, we have a prelim IM categorical program itself. So this is just the general outlook of the schedule. Um, it's been categorical since me and Michelle started. We were actually the very first class. So you do about 10 to 12 weeks of the general medical floor, do a little bit of cardiac step down, a little bit of, of medical step down, we actually don't work in the ICU. So the highest level of acuity you'll get is the step down unit. Um, you also get one month of PM and R stroke rehab. So you'll be working for the PGY twos or fours on stroke, which I think is really helpful. Um, elective time, 12 to 14 weeks. Um, it's usually a range of you know, neuro, rheumatology, GI. It's a good mix of you know things that would be very relevant for PM and R and also just good IM ones as well to get good background knowledge for when you guys actually start as PGY2s. Categorical here. And so then this is also just a rough breakdown of um, each year. So just looking at this, the big things to take away is you will be doing a good amount of inpatient in your first year. Um, it's about eight months total. Six months will be um, at Metro and then two months will be at the VA. We have We'll go into it a little bit more as well, but we have a dedicated stroke floor, a dedicated spinal cord floor, and a dedicated uh, TBI floor. So you do two months of each as a PGY-2, and then you do one month of um, inpatient general at the VA and then inpatient spinal cord. Um, then you get one month of consults as well, and you can do also a little bit of research mixing with that. And as you continue to move on as a PGY-3 and a PGY-4, you start to get more of these outpatient rotations. Be learning in PGY-3 and doing that as well as a PGY-4, and also get some of these other rotations that we rotate through with the clinic. So pediatric, consult, and MSK. 
So for inpatient rehab, we are a CARF accredited uh, institution. We have three floors and it's a 56 bed standalone rehab facility. Uh, we are part of the SEI model system, one of 18 in the country, and we have a locked brain injury unit as well, which is also um, not super typical for every single rehab. Uh, our three floors are divided into stroke, SCI, and TBI, and then our general rehab patients are kind of sprinkled amongst the three floors. In addition, we have been uh, listed as one of the U.S. News and World Report best hospitals for rehabilitation. Okay, and outpatient blocks, Nirmal will also talk about this. Overall with our programs, we have a lot of different clinics. And as the scheduling chief, I have the honor to really be able to help mishmash. And even though we have very set things in each month, there is a lot of flexibility for where I can put people for clinics and really take into consideration too what people are interested in. Um, but just the general titles of each rotation. So our pain rotation, this would be just our general pain medicine clinic, uh, also pain procedures in the floor of suite. Um, you get everything that's bread and butter, right? Your RFAs, meal brand blocks, your interlaminars, all the different procedures you'll get, and you'll get a lot of good practice with that. Um, our MSK clinics, uh, you'll, you know, again, bread and butter, get all the good MSK cases, um, all the chronic cases. You know, you start as a PGY2, and you can definitely see yourself improve each year as you continue to do MSK and get good exposure for ultra guided injections. I think our neuro rehab outpatient is very robust. You'll, there's a lot of different here and a lot of availability. Um, so while we do have like a stereotypical brain injury outpatient, um, spasticity, stroke, we do have our touch your hand clinic. So we work with our ortho surgeons and we get to see some of these patients that we took care of on the inpatient service, see how well they're progressing and seeing if there are surgical things that they can get done that would help them. We also have our year dynamics as well, which I think is a very valuable thing to help our spinal cord patients. Um, we do have um, wheelchair clinic and assistive pack too. Um, uh, cancer rehab, lipedema is our main APT position. We do a lot with cancer. month where we do a lot more. We really learn our EMGs those months. Go back from all. Um, I believe that most of the program about doing um, home call. We do in house call. So, 24 hour call, you usually will take sign out around 4 o'clock and then out to the day resident at 7 a.m. So, it's roughly about 24 hours. Um, you, The goal is to hit 61 calls by the end of PGY3 year. Usually that ends up being a little under 50 by the end of PGY two years. So it's around four per month. PGY three, um, it's about one per month. Sometimes there's some months where you're not even on call. And then no call whatsoever as a PGY four. And also to note with this, PGY twos only work about two holidays. And then the rest of the holidays they'll have off. PGY three, PGY fours, you'll always have the holidays off. All right, resident continuity clinic. So as you've heard from other programs, they have continuity, continuity clinic and so do we. It's during our PGY3 and PGY4 year. It's one half day a week and you spend one year in neuro clinic and one year in MSK clinic. Here we have a picture of Dr. Placeway and his MSK pod for that year. Um, continuity clinic, I think is a great opportunity to take ownership of a patient population that you follow. And it's a great way to practice being an attending because you are seeing your patients, you're following them, you're coming up with their plans, and the attending is really just kind of supervising, but it allows you a lot of autonomy. All right, well, we'll move on to training locations. So as we said, we're located in Cleveland, but actually our main campus is a little bit south of downtown itself. Uh, we have Metro Main Campus, which is located uh, south of Tremont. And then we have the old Brooklyn Medical Center, which is where we have our acute rehab, which is a little bit further south than that. We also have our other rotations at the Cleveland Clinic, um, which is kind of close to Case Western's campus and also with the VA. Um, that area, it serves a different patient population, and uh, we get to get good experience um, with those two different hospital systems as well. Next, we have some pictures of our facilities. Our old Brooklyn uh, facility was relatively uh, newly remodeled, and so everything's pretty new and uh, in good condition. 
Here's some more pictures of our facilities. All the floors look pretty similar. Our traumatic brain injury unit is a locked unit, as we mentioned earlier, and their gym is therefore located on that level. So all the patients don't have to commute to the gym that is usually on the terrace level for the stroke and the spinal cord patients. Next, we'll talk a little bit about didactics. Thermal will mention a little bit something about that. Yeah, so didactics, so we do, it's an 18 month, like for your three years, get every topic twice. Um, it is protected time on Thursdays itself. So it's three hours that are faculty led, then one hour is a resident led lecture. So I think that really helps with residents who are interested in teaching. And it's honestly, the more you learn, the more you read and be able to teach other people, you really improve your own learning. I think it's very valuable. We also do ultrasound workshops, Dr. Rainey, and then one of our new sports uh, physicians, Dr. Allison Schrader, will also be leading that. Um, we do a good amount of board review or board practice as well in the mornings. Um, I think it's really good practice. Right now, um, for the threes and fours, we're doing our EMG workshops. So a lot of it is the fours teaching the threes. We're always trying to trickle down and pass down the information. Um, I think that's very valuable. We did our physical exam workshops. Uh, I think that's very helpful for Okay, here are some of our didactic topics that we covered during our 18th month cycle. I also like to mention that we, our faculty are superb and they're leaders in the field and it's really a valuable educational experience to learn directly from them. All right, we'll talk about procedural exposure. Uh, oh. Here, Mom, uh, we, we can't hear you. Thank you, Tiffany. I was wondering about that too. I wasn't sure if it was me or him. Um, I'll give him a couple of seconds to chime in and if we don't hear from him, then I, I guess I'll take over this slide. Okay, we have a really robust procedural exposure. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, we have ultrasounded ultrasound guided injections, which include tendon sheath injections, bursa injections, peripheral joints, nerve blocks. We also get a good amount of EMGs and nerve conduction studies. We don't really have any issues hitting any of our numbers for any required procedures. Well, we also see trigger points, botulinum toxin injections. We have exposure to ITV pump refills. Uh, we have some exposure to regenerative medicine and shockwave and things like TENJET. And our pain procedures are really big. Uh, we do have a uh, fellowship uh, for pain. We have four spots. And uh, even with those fellows, we still have a very easy time hitting our uh, epidural injection numbers, axial facet. Um, we also get experience with SI joints, nerve blocks, and RFAs and medial branch blocks. Um, for this portion, you can kind of tailor it to your interests. For example, Nermal is interested in sports medicine. So he has really tailored his experience to getting a lot of ultrasound guided injection numbers. Um, and I'm more interested in neuro rehab. So I have focused a lot on botulinum toxin injections and some ITB experience. All right, next we'll move on to research opportunities. Um, I. We are part of the Center of Rehabilitation Research for Metro Health. It's one of the top funded uh, NIH research programs uh, amongst the country. And we also have a robust uh, didactics curriculum dedicated to teaching residents how to interpret uh, research articles. And we also have one-on-one -on -one chats with um, our former chair, Dr. Che, who is now one of the uh, VPs of the whole hospital and also the co-director of the Center of Rehabilitation Research. We have one-on-one -on -one sessions with him where he goes over uh, research topics as well. And I think we all find that super valuable that we get that one-on-one -on -one FaceTime where we can have uh, direct learning from him. Um, and speaking of the Center of Rehabilitation Research, it allows us to work directly with a lot of our PhD faculty. And uh, we do have a PhD, a research mentor as well to help us with our research projects. Uh, Case Western slash Metro Health funded the Functional Electrical Stimulation Center. Uh, 
and it is a global leader in that field. We also have a gate lab and we have generous support for conference presentations. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about resident benefits. Uh, we have 20 vacation days that don't include any weekends, and we have seven official holidays that are listed. As Nirmal mentioned, the PGY2s cover all the holidays, and uh, they only cover about two each, and then they have the rest of holidays off, and then no holiday coverage for PGY3 or PGY4. We have up to five interview days for PGY4s, and we have up to five conference, day, conference days per year for each resident to attend any conference that they would like. And residents that are presenting any research have the opportunity to get funded by our department. And on top of that, we do have an additional $2,500 uh, for an education stipend for tech, textbooks, texts, and conferences, if you wanna um, surpass the amount that is get, that gets funded. And then we have up to 10 sick days and we have food stipends to use at Metro and on-call meal reimbursement, uh, for example. So our cafeteria is not open on the weekends, but we will reimburse some Uber Eats or DoorDash over the weekend if you are on call. So uh, we mentioned a little bit about our fellowships. We have three fellowships available at Metro Health. One of them is spinal cord injury, which has two positions per year. One of them is traumatic brain injury, which is one position per year. And then we have pain medicine available, which is four positions per year. Mentorship. Sorry to interrupt, you have five minutes. Okay. Mentorship, we have formal and informal mentors. Uh, we get assigned mentors as PGY2s, but you're allowed to, you're encouraged to find mentors that also align with your interests. We also have informal mentorship with our pods that are peer mentors that we kind of get connected with as a PGY1. Uh, Case Western, since we're affiliated, we do get all these uh, benefits and um, resources as well. Uh, let's still talk a little bit about sports coverage. I'm not sure if Nermal's back on, but I'll... Yeah, are you, are you able together. to hear me now? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so briefly with sports coverage, we cover five different high schools uh, for football and basketball. Um, we do high school physicals, cover the sideline coverage. We have adaptive sports, so we end up covering a lot of the like adaptive basketball and rugby tournaments. We are starting this year covering the Cuyahoga Community College, and so that is something... I'm looking forward to as well since I'm very interested in sports. So that'll be some volleyball and football with that. And then Cleveland Crunch, which is a semi-professional soccer team. And then on top of our uh, official didactics, we also ha have education at conferences. We have a wellness retreat. We um, volunteered at the Youth Challenge this year. And we have Journal Club. Uh, that's not part of our didactics. This is sports medicine and pain medicine and neuro rehab focused. It, rotates on a three-month basis, and it's resident run. More pictures of Journal Club. We have a Fantasy Football League. This is their trophy. And then we have uh, some other resident events like the Pod Olympics, which is basically like a family tree for our residents. Um, we have happy hours, which are included with CCF and UH residents, since there are three uh, PM&R residency programs in Cleveland. We all actually like to socialize and get together. And then we have our welcome barbecue as well. And then we have a Christmas holiday party every year. And then some just general pictures about life in Cleveland. Um, residents are spread out throughout the city. Um, it's generally pretty easy to get around. Your commute will not be greater than 40 minutes and in, in, to any location, anywhere you live really. So here's some pictures of the different neighborhoods in Cleveland. which span a lot. Fun fact, Cleveland is called the Ibiza of the Midwest. Some pictures of downtown and we have a big art scene. We have also the second largest theater district in the nation. And we have all the major sports teams, which include the Cleveland Browns, the Cavaliers, the Guardians, the Monsters, which is a hockey team, and the Cleveland Crunch, which we also help uh, do sports sideline coverage. Here are our Instagram and um, X or Twitter handles if you have interest in following. And if you have any follow-up questions, you're more than welcome to email us at metropmrchief at metrohealth.org. Okay, and we'll kind of leave it there. Does anyone have any questions? If not, then we can talk about what we think our biggest highlights for the program are. Okay, let's look through the chat. 
answered a few questions here. I think Perfect. big questions. Um, as far as EMG numbers, we don't really have a problem hitting our numbers and even going a little above and beyond. You know, we usually get a good amount with our specialty month and then also on some of our other rotations. Like I kind of said about having flexibility on our like general rotations and neuro rotations. I can always help if people are interested in doing EMGs or they want to do more, we can always find room for them to do that. Um, and then also with the VA, we have extra people and extra ways we can get more EMGs. Yeah, Nermal has been working really hard at uh, making sure that um, we kind of report our EMG numbers on a periodic basis. And if we need help or if we start to notice that we would want to do more EMGs, then he will work with the schedule to get you in in those clinics. So there is some flexibility within our program. We also have our electives. Uh, we have three months of electives between PGY3 and PGY4. Um, so if you want to do EMGs at that time, you can as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. That brings us to time for the evening. Thank you guys uh, for being with us and for presenting on Metro Health. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you everyone for staying around as well.